Good evening, everybody. It's October the 10th, and this is a new human experience podcast. Tonight's topic is called A Model of the World. Now, I call this A Model of the World because it is really just a model. I'm not trying to say that there is only this model and this is the only model, although the, the only one that, that, that is true and real and works. It is my model for the time being, and I may change it. Um, however, I just want to share what my understanding of the, 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 the model of the world is. Um, and maybe it will help you or maybe not. So this is just what I'm working with. So I just want to give some background as to how come um, I, I want to make this the topic for tonight. It's because last Saturday, um, there's Franco Ginicola actually did a, um, an online live stream workshop. And he talked about how um, now that the, we are split into uh, the organic 3D, uh, the third dimension, and also the organic fifth dimension. Now, right now it's not organic. The, the um, inverted matrix is still about 40% um functioning uh, and 60 percent of it has already been taken down so we actually everyone whether you're in 3d whether your soul choose to be in 3d or whether your soul have chosen to be in the fifth dimension it does not matter the the is the it's the same thing the um inverted matrix in both scenarios both uh, dimension is still maybe about 40% of that left. And he did mention that the, the rest of the year, and also we have about um, the, uh, the rest of the year, towards the end of the year, then the rest of the 40% of the inverted matrix will also be dismantled as well, which means that we, the um, inverted matrix will no longer be supplying extra fuel for our ego however we still have to do the any work we each and every one of us whether we're in 3d or 5d we still have to do the inner work to let go of our programs and also to dismantle our ego as well because as long as there is the ego then um, oneness will um, it's not easy for us to really understand what oneness is about and how to play in oneness because even in the third dimension consciousness oneness is actually part of the third dimension it is just even more accentuated when you get into the fifth dimension so there is about um so after the inverted matrix being dismantled uh, towards the end of this year, towards the end of 2019. We have, from 2020 onwards, we have about three years to integrate so that if we have chosen to be in third dimension, then we have about three years to really let go of the programs and let them dissolve the ego and do all that inner work so that we can truly be functioning fully in organic 3D and the same thing for 5D. Not that we um, we have to take that long. However, we are given that period of time as a maximum. So in three years, our soul would um, really help us to give us. Um, I would say sometimes if we needed a kick in our butt in order for us to really work on ourselves and and also all that our soul would orchestrate all that so that by the end of that period we actually would be all functioning in organic 3d or organic 5d depending on what this our soul have picked so that's why i want to share with all of you the a model of the world because i find that um when i have this different understanding of a model of the world then it actually helps me to look at my own programs and really be 
able to um, work on releasing and dissolving my own ego as well. So let me just begin. So whatever you see right now is a model of the world. So this is the, the model of the world that um, we have when we're under the inverted matrix. So when we're under the inverted matrix, this, this you know, black lady here representing me, so I'm just telling you, this is a representation of my understanding of what um, the ego looks at the world is the ego is this black um, representation of my body which is me um, Winnie and then the world would be uh, like yes I have a lot less people in the world but actually this is just to tell you that there's all the other people so this so this kind of circle is really the world as me as the ego looking out and meaning that the world is separate from me. And the world does not mean that it's only people, it's also um, things, places, mountains, animals, what have you, galaxies or planets, all of that is completely separate from me. So I am me, the eagle, is the black lady, um, representing how my ego look at it, is that I am separate from the world. So when you're living in this model of the world from the ego's point of view, then with the world is a scary place because if I'm separate from the world, then um, I would all things would always be happening to me, and I would, from the ego's point of view, I would have to do something in order to make myself safe because I'm just this one little person in the world and it's so much bigger than me and I can't control anything. So I would have to think of strategies in order to control the people around me, the events around me. So I may um, adopt different strategies, how to control the people around me. For, for example, when I was you know, a little baby, I would, um, may, like control my, my mother or my father by just being cute, just smiling at them, being cute. Or sometimes I may just cry so that they would, you know, go into a panic and just try different things, give me food or change my diaper or all that. So, so that's the strategy that I've learned that if I do something, whether it is I smile at them or I cry, depending on what works better for my environment, I would use that strategy to try to control the people around me so that I would get fed, I would get changed, I would get all the things that my, my little body, the, the ego, thinks that this little body is me. So I would, that's how I start to learn how to control the people around me so that I can um, get, so that I can stay alive. And then as I grow, there will be other things I would need to um, like start to maybe adopt the, the strategy that if I have money, if I find ways to earn money, then I can start to control things like being able to um, eat at better restaurants, being able to you know, drive a nicer car or live in a better house, sleep on a better bed and all those things and you know buy the latest iphone so that people would you know think that i'm i'm doing well all these little strategies and as long as i am separate from the world then this fear would come in the fear of i'm not in control i need to do something in order to make sure that i survive so this is all from the egoic point and so everything I do, no matter what it is, is all to solve this problem of I am separate. So this is what um, I, the, the model of the world, when we are under the, the inverted matrix, we, and I was born into it and everybody else that's on the, the call right now, we're all born into this model of the world. And it is really 
um, and we we did the best we could whether we um, learn whether we go to school so that we can um, learn skills to help us better manage uh, our environment and all that that's that's all that is about so i'm gonna actually go to a different model of the world which i propose um we can have well, let me see yes this is the second one let me just try to make it bigger so everybody can see oh, maybe not that big okay so this is a different model of the world which i'm proposing that is now my current understanding and it's helping me to really um, see myself much better so the second model of the world which is the new and improved model of the world so the world is everything that is within this it's it's kind of a light gray boundary however this is this is the model this is the this is the world everything is in it even i am inside it so the the black um girly figure is that still represents me and everybody else there are about seven on like just under eight billion people in the world right now alive just so all of these people whether it is the um, on planet earth whether it is mars the moon the sun uh, all the different galaxies everything is within this world and so am i so my body is actually in this world as well my body is not outside of this so everything in here is actually my consciousness so my consciousness created this world or my consciousness co-created this world and this world includes everything even me i my body is within this world so when i look out even though as i look out from my eyes it looks like things are outside of me however that's really an illusion and all the senses that is giving me the information and all that is actually all within my consciousness. So within my consciousness, I, my body is within my consciousness and everyone else is also within my consciousness. And within my consciousness, I have created all of you and it, to come into this podcast with me to listen to me babble and also uh, a lot of the other people that would listen to the podcast after this time and space so all of these things is all within my consciousness there's nothing outside of my consciousness and i just want to repeat that my consciousness is everything that is within this circle which includes all the other people on earth and it includes all the other planets all the other galaxies as well those everything whether it's aliens whether there are any other living beings in the other planets galaxies or not i'm not going to debate that but i'm just saying that all and everything is within my consciousness including my body so how and why do I find that this is a better model of the world? Because if I, if I look at it from this way, that everything is within my consciousness, then it's a lot of it makes sense is that this really represents oneness because everything is just one and within my consciousness, everything is actually one. It helps me transcend the separateness because my body is actually within my consciousness. My consciousness is not within my body. It's actually the other way around. It act, our senses actually fooled us into thinking that our consciousness is in the body, but it's not. It's actually our body is within our consciousness. 
that's why when things like my mother um, being who she is triggers me sometimes. It actually triggered me a lot in the past, but nowadays she triggered me a lot less. So how is that possible? That's only possible that she knows exactly what to say in order to trigger me is because we are all within this consciousness. That's why she knows exactly what she needed to say in order to help me realize that I have all these programs that's running me and is not letting me um, be free so that I can experience my mother for who she is and accept her completely so that I truly understand that she is just another aspect of me. And when I start to look at the world and everyone around me in this way, actually, it helps me to um, really look at what my ego is doing and what programs actually showed up. And so, for example, I just want to um, give you all an example of how this showed up is that um, so Tuesday I went to have a session with Franco because I thought I needed that in order to really facilitate and help myself to integrate all the the, the changes that's been happening in the, in the, the earlier this year. So after my session with Franco, I was like totally sent out. I was like beaming and everything is good. And then um, the next day, Wednesday, I went to a meetup and this... Um, so this lady came, walked in, and she is just being herself. And she triggered me so much. And I thought that, oh, I just went to Franco. I'm like invincible, but I'm not. <laughs> she triggered me so much. And it was and like while she was triggering me, I was like, ah, how dare she? Like, like how dare she be who she is and, and being so... Um, egoic and all that I was having all of this you know spiritual um, what one upmanship flaring up and it's like <sighs> and so I was at one at one point I was observing my own reaction to her and I'm also um, knowing that yeah this is just the ego trying to give me a um, a story so that I I get triggered and I was so thankful that she showed up because that's really um, like she triggered me of course do I hate her guts of course but I also love her because she is another aspect of me that's showing up and really telling me that oh you have this program here that you know somehow you and Franco missed so you so that's so it's because of that, that program that created that separation between me and her. It's not that there's anything wrong with her. She is the way she is and she's perfect. I just hate her guts for being so um, brazen because I don't have the guts to be co totally who I am. No matter who is there, I, I um, like to adjust myself so that I can fit in, but she doesn't try. She would just be herself. And I actually admired her and I'm so jealous of that she can be that. So this is something for, so she is actually showed up right the next day after I had a session with Franco so that I can get triggered and so that I can actually look into the programs and just laugh at myself and let it go. And um, so that's all happening and it's all good. And I can do that now because uh, I have this model of the world that there is no one outside of me because everyone is just within my consciousness. And who she is is actually an aspect of myself. And if I look really ex start to extend that, then there is really nothing that would um, 
if I really go and do the work, that nothing can actually face me anymore. I should say nothing will trigger me anymore. Because, you know, for example, I've heard that um, even yesterday in the evening that uh, somebody shared on the, the, the call that they are worried about because they, they live in Hong Kong, so they're worried about the um, students' protest is really bringing that level of unrest and they're not comfortable and they don't feel safe there. They don't feel safe in Hong Kong. And so for whatever reason, However, if I look at, if I just use this new model of the world to really look at it that, yes, the, the student protesters is an aspect of me. The policeman and the uh, opposing um, point of view from China's point of view is also an aspect of me and that these ideas are clashing and it's all because that within me, within my own consciousness, within my own psyche, there is this disharmony between, could be between what I know um, in my knowing versus what I know when I'm conditioned under the, the, the inverted matrix. There is this clash of ideas that is playing out in and it's looking in the world for me to see as the clash between the students and the, the the policemen because the students they have a very different point of view and and the the policemen have very point of view different point of view and they are doing this clashing out and that's actually if you look at it from this new model of the world is that they're actually showing me that within my own consciousness there is inconsistency and that actually gives me a lot of control because i don't need to feel unsafe no matter where i am whether i am in canada or whether i'm actually living in china in in hong kong it's still i would still feel safe because Everyone is just me. They're all just a different aspect of me. When there is nothing and no one outside of you, then whatever happens, it is just everything is actually under your control. And all you have to do is to look inward and start to let go of the inconsistency that is in my own thinking that is in my own belief, that it is in my own like, like programs that are, there are programs, different programs with very opposing um, agenda is just coming to the surface. And when I can get congruent within, then what happens is that my vibration would change. And as my vibration change, then I would be able to tune in to a different level, a different reality where that kind of um, clashing of ideas cannot and will not be existing anymore. So the more that each of us can do that inner work, we'll start to be able to manifest um, together a very different world where oneness where we can actually be able to look into someone else and be able to disagree with them without having to um, shoot at them or try to harm them we can just look into each other's eyes and say i disagree however i know that i respect them that they can have whatever ideas that they can, they have and also to really agree to disagree without resorting to violence. And that's what this is all about, is, is really trying to get to the point where we, we don't just think of oneness as an idea, is that we actually live our life 
that way is to no matter how we disagree with someone is still respect them that they are just living life at as best they can so this is how i am doing how i'm actually using this um, new model of the world and start to use that um, wisdom that different level to be able to start to um, whatever it is that's happened outside is actually something that is within me that needed to be transmuted transformed and in that way when i change then the world around me the, my consciousness will change and when my consciousness change then i would be tuned into a very different world so that's how I find this model of the world works for me. And I'm sharing with you, I'm not trying to convince you, I'm just um, suggesting that if you're, you think this, is, this makes sense to you, I invite you to give this a try. Maybe you benefit from it, maybe not. So I would like to hear your feedback and how you make out with this different model of the world. So I'm just gonna 